Good evening and welcome to your call. Joining me tonight is the Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, someone who's just had his 12th five-year plan cleared by the Cabinet, also someone who's seen at the heart of the government's current reforms agenda, Dr. Montek Singh Aluwalia. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's an interesting time to be heading the Planning Commission and to be in government when the wave or the second wave of big bang reforms has just been announced. What's interesting, however, is that many ask, is this more about window shopping in a sense? Because these reforms, unlike the last ones, had to be passed by Parliament and the UPA is in a minority as such at the moment. Well, you know, any legislative action has to be passed by Parliament and Parliament is supreme in this matter. I think the important signal uh, that's being given is that these bills were now ready to go back to Parliament. In some important areas, like for example the FDI and in insurance, mm -hmm. uh, the Standing Committee of Parliament had recommended against taking it to 49. Uh, what the government is doing is that particular recommendation is not being accepted. Now I think people should understand that you know Standing Committee recommendations don't have to be accepted and if you look at the last uh, 25 standing committee reports, some recommendations get accepted, some don't get accepted. So what the government is doing is they're saying, look, we think 49 is important. I think they've made a very good case that there should be no worry on 49 at all. Mm -hmm. And we're going back to parliament. Now, it depends on whether parliament passes it or not. I hope they will. Really key to passing both these reforms or both these uh, liberalization bills will be the BJP. And as somebody, you worked as an economic advisor in the NDA government and the BJP and Congress uh, economy especially, their politics on that is often comparable. At least the left has always charged them with being virtually the same except for the fact that uh, the different political parties. Are you hopeful that the BJP may be one supporter? They've already said we're going to study the fine print before taking a final call. Well, I would welcome any party supporting a position that the government has taken and I think if the BJP rethinks the position they took in the standing committee and decides to support these bills, I think it would be a very positive signal. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everybody understands that in politics, I mean, it's the job of the opposition to oppose, but then there's a certain point in which you kind of move, th allow things to move forward. And let's hope that they look at it that way. So, of course, I mean, there are various studies which say that the experiences there haven't been very good, but... No, I, by the way, let me, uh, I want to make a point on One presented there by Mr. Sindhya in the house. In, there are innumerable, st most of these studies are studies of Walmart, okay? And actually Walmart uh, is an extraordinary example of a company that began like a, a, a small Kirana store really and become a retail giant. A lot of the studies criticize Walmart because they, according to the American studies, uh, they don't uh, give labor uh, the full protection. That is, These are issues, of regulatory issues. I mean, I'm not in favor of anybody coming here and not observing the labor laws, etc. So we should police that. I don't believe there is any serious study that says we should roll back hypermarkets. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just Walmart. I mean, Walmart is one company. So I think these studies are being grossly exaggerated. The other thing you have to remember is that in many societies, I mean, Overwhelmingly, the evidence is that as change occurs, I mean, modern retail flourishes along with traditional retail. And in very rich countries, you actually get a flip back into the smaller retailer. But what does happen is that the smaller retailer upgrades himself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you get a modern retailer who's got an air-conditioned shop, then the smaller retailer also air-conditions their shop. And frankly, I, I mean, the Delhi example shows that. And the number of malls, etc., have improved, increased, but so have the number of retail shops. So there is simply no credible evidence on this, in my view. But you're saying don't be Walmart specific, but the fact is Walmart is the main company, the joint venture already in India, and they seem to be the main uh, main ones really who are in front of the queue to come in. It's not the other ones no, are being much more cautious. No, I don't think so. I think there's Carrefour, there's Walmart, there's Tesco, and uh, once you open up... I, I should make one other point, by the way. Everybody's thinking of opening up as simply allowing uh, companies that uh, actually will control the thing opening up. The opening up also allows Indian retailers to bring in passive foreign investment. Mm -hmm. So if Pantaloons or Biani or b whatever have more or something, all these uh, retail shops that have opened up want to increase their own capital. This policy allows them to bring in private investment. Quite frankly, in 20 years from now, in my view, Indian retail should have a brand name internationally. 
There's no reason why we cannot be one of the leading retailers, or one or two of us, be one of the leading retailers operating in Asia. I don't believe we can do that if our companies cannot, are, are seen as incapable of competing with anyone. So frankly, I think this is an unreasonable fear. I think it's being whipped up for political purposes. People are being misled, and I hope not too many people will be misled. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.